All right, so we have unit two, lesson one, congruent parts. So our learning goal is let's figure out what corresponding sides and angles and figures have to do with congruence. So just a FYI, congruent sides um, would be something where if you look at the warm up 1.1, you would notice that from rectangle A to rectangle B, um, SR, right, line segment SR, or side length SR, uh, would be corresponding to the side length S prime R prime. So those would be uh, corresponding sides. Okay. So that was that would be an example of corresponding sides. Now corresponding angles, let's say angle PSR, right, is corresponding to angle Q prime R prime uh, S prime. So those would be corresponding angles. Okay, they'd be both in the bottom left hand side of both those objects. So that's just an example of what corresponding means. All right, so let's look on to the idea of what the warm-up is actually focused on. Uh, it's asking, uh, what do you notice? What do you wonder? So transforming rectangles. Well, what do you what do you guys notice? So go ahead and pause the video and see what you can come up with. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and you kind of looked around and you realized these appear to be all rectangles, right? Rectangle A, rectangle B, C, and D, right? Um, maybe the placements of the vertices are different, right? If you notice, Q was originally uh, top right hand of figure A, and then for uh, rectangle B, Q prime looks like Q prime uh, reflects across over to the other side, right, to land on the left hand. Can we say the same thing about R? Like if you look at R, did R also look like it reflected across to where S is? And then both P and S reflect across over here. So it looks like the vertices uh, switched, right? Now let's see, what about compared to rectangle A to rectangle C? Mm, looks like, do you guys see this? Looks like P and S stay as P prime and S prime. So those, those didn't change. But do you notice how Q and R? changed that's weird okay that's really strange because shouldn't have those points changed as well otherwise this entire rectangle right here is twisted up right so that's very weird what can you see about figure c to figure d all right so Looks like R went over here, right? Map over here. Uh, S, on the other hand, for some odd reason, jumped over here, right? Landed over here. So definitely the vertices are changing, right? So definitely your points are changing. Some are reflecting. Others are just doing some weird translations across. It's really weird. All right, so if we know this, then we know that, activity 1.2. So first things first is uh, they tell us that these two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF, are congruent. Okay, what does that mean? That means that their corresponding sides are the same length and their angles as well. So we're going to use a sequence of rigid transformations that can take triangle ABC to triangle DEF. Now, I know what you're, you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, that's just a reflection. 
true, but do we know a reflection across a line? Do we know the line of reflection? No, no, we don't. So we really have to go point by point here. So I'll tell you what, first things first. All right, let me trace over the original figure, if my pen will allow me to. Looks like my pen's giving me technical difficulties. There we go. There, that's better. And I'll tell you what, first things first, I should probably put the order here. Uh, so first, we'll translate. And triangle ABC along, let me be strategic here. What if we, what if we go from B to E? Let's try that. So if we do that, okay, translation from B to E. So point B is going to map perfectly onto point E. So what does that look like? That looks like this. So we're translating over to E. Ta-da. Okay. Step two. Let's see, what should we do now? Hmm. I noticed that, okay, so just to clarify, uh, C is still here, A is still over down there, right? And B is now uh, on point E, right? Which is fine. I'm going to have to, again, I know that you're thinking, yeah, you could just do a reflection across point B then, right? Um, yeah, but the line of reflection is difficult, right? We don't have a, an exact line that we can work with. So I'm still going to have to go by point by point. So I notice right away, you know, I can map AB onto ED by rotation counterclockwise. Okay. So... I'm going to rotate, and what that's going to look like is I'm going to have to copy and paste this real quick. All right, let me make sure I do this so you guys can see it all. Copy, paste. And what I'm going to do is, if you're watching, I'm going to rotate counterclockwise along angle A, B, D to get that, okay? So that's my second step. Let me clean up my, my marks here. So this is step two. So step two, I rotate triangle ABC. Uh, counterclockwise at angle A, B, D, right, which is from here to here counterclockwise. All right, if you notice, A, B is now mapped perfectly onto E, D, right? E is over here and B is on top of it, right, uh, still, and then A is now on top of D. Right, so the last thing is a simple reflection. Okay, a reflection on what line? Uh, let me let's use there we go. Uh, let's use purple. So, if you notice, if I reflect across AB or ED, uh, your second triangle will reflect perfectly onto where it needs to. So, that's step three. Reflect triangle ABC across um, AB or ED, either or. In fact, let's just say ED, since it's the triangle that we're 
trying to map onto in the first place. Okay. So again, ED is right there. Okay. All right, so that, that would be a sequence that would work. Now, what does that mean? Let's see, um, let's look at the questions and see if the questions kind of talk about it in further. What is the image of segment BC after the transformation? All right, well, let's look at BC. Let me highlight it. BC is here, right, in pink. You translate it over, it's up here. And then when you do the rotation, it's right here. And then when you do the reflection, it lands perfectly onto EF. You see that? So EF. Um, now it fits perfectly onto EF. So BC maps onto EF. Uh, so therefore, can we say that BC is going to be congruent to EF? Right, they map perfectly onto one another. Right, if they if they map on perfectly onto one another, that means they 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 fit. Okay, so again, AB or I'm sorry, BC, right, translates over here, it rotates down with the uh, rotation, and then when it reflects across, it lands perfectly onto uh, EF. Okay, so that's what we were talking about right there. Let me clean up the screen a bit. There we go. Um, explain how you know those segments are congruent. Uh, well, there exists a sequence of rigid transformations. Right? That mapped. BC onto EF. All right, because remember, rigid transformations preserve length, they preserve angle measures. So if you have an object mapping onto another object perfectly, that means they're congruent to one another. All right, now they say justify angle. I'm gonna have to use some highlighting here. Let's use all right, angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. All right, so we have to justify. Angle ABC is right here, right? And we're trying to figure out if it's congruent to angle DEF. DEF is right here. Okay, so we're trying to justify that part for number four, okay? So let's see, we do a translation, right? Angle ABC is now over here, right? We do the rotation, now it's over here. We do the reflection and that angle would map onto that angle, right? So as you can see, the sequence of transformations that we used uh, definitely maps angle ABC onto angle DEF. So you can use even the same reasoning from our last question to explain number four. Okay, except the only difference is, instead of talking about line segments, we we're talking about the angles. Angle ABC Right, which mapped perfectly onto DEF with the whole rigid transformations or sequence of rigid transformations. Okay, that were basically shown in the image there. Okay, so again, if these two shapes are given to us to be congruent, that means they should map perfectly onto one another with a certain sequence of rigid motions. Okay, which which we did. First we translated, right? We slide triangle ABC across uh, from B to E to where B lands on E. We did a rotation, 
counterclockwise along angle ABD, right? And again, angle ABD was based on ABD, that angle right there, okay? And then we reflect across ED, so our rectangle mapped perfectly onto triangle DEF. Did I say rectangle? Triangle, my bad. Okay, uh, next up, making quadrilaterals. All right, so this part is definitely a geogebra thing for you guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and follow through their steps. You definitely create your own triangle. All right, so step one, they say draw a triangle. You're definitely gonna have to use this tool, right? You'll get uh, some points, right? In the process, it'll line up those points if my pen can not be so buggy right now. Wow, my pen is really buggy. Okay, from here to here. There, there. And I don't like that. There we go. My pen is really buggy today. Yes, undo. Wow, that is the most buggy I've ever seen. All right, let's do this again. There we go, created my triangle. There we go. Okay, um, let's go ahead and get some points here. Point A, B, C, okay? So we drew a triangle, got that. You create yours, of course. Um, then they say, find the midpoint of the longest side of your triangle. Well, I think I drew a right triangle here, so my longest side would be line segment AC. Um, I can't guess, I have to use, right? I have to use the compass tool. So that means I need to create two long, uh, circles, right? With both the radius of AC. How do I do that? Let's go ahead and try. I have to draw those perfect circles. Now I have to get a circle to map perfectly onto point here. I need to make my circle smaller so it maps or it crosses on a point C. As you can see, I wish I was using GeoGebra instead of my notability tool, but I'm trying my best here. Okay, and then I wanna make another circle, this time mapped onto C. All right, centered at C, I should say. And then with the same radius of AC, okay? And this is how we do midpoints, right? Also the same as perpendicular bisectors. So we have our two points of intersection right and we can draw our line that's a horrible line there we go i'm gonna have to adjust my line there there we go that's good enough for government work and here's my midpoint Ta-da! all right then they say rotate your triangle 180 degrees around that midpoint so we already did number two Rotate 120 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to have to uh, copy this real quick. I have to paste. Okay, let me clean up a whole bunch that I did here. Okay, let me label them primes because they'll be primes after I do this rotation. There we go. And for you, you'll have to use this tool right here. You'll select the rectangle itself, right, on uh, GeoGebra. 
and then you'll type in 180 degrees. Now, for me, I'm going a little difficult here. All right, and then let me get my fingers. There we go. So here you are, right? Here's the the rectangle, and then they say rotate 180 degrees around that midpoint. And I'm doing this by hand, so it's kind of weird, but you can see me rotating. And then I think I got it. Oop, I gotta make the rectangle a little. All right, I kind of made the triangle grow a bit. There we go. Nice. Okay, I did it. Nice. Okay. Wow. Okay. Label the corresponding parts and mark what must be congruent. So I'm going to kind of clean up this uh, construction business that I did for my midpoint. Okay. And as you can see, after I rotate, uh, C maps onto where A originally was. Right, and let me clean this up. So C lands over here, right after the rotation, and A A lands or maps over here onto where C originally was. And then B just does a full rotation all the way around, right, and lands over here. So Wow. Okay, label the corresponding parts. Mark what must be congruent. Well, let's start with uh, AC here. AC is the same as A prime C prime, isn't it? So that that part would be congruent to itself. So you can say AC is congruent to A prime C prime, right? And that's actually the reflexive property. Reflexive property. Okay, because AC is A prime C prime, right? It even maps onto itself. Um, do we agree that uh, AB is going to be kind of corresponding to uh, or congruent to uh, B prime A prime? Right, so AB should be congruent to um, A prime, B prime. What about AB, or I'm sorry, A to B prime being congruent to uh, B, C, or A prime, B. I'm gonna clean that up. Okay. So, and again, AC is congruent to itself, right? A prime, C prime. Do you agree that uh, this angle right here, angle ABC, is going to be corresponding to angle? Uh, a, B prime, C, which would mean they would be course, uh, congruent to one another. All right. So again, this angle right here is going to be corresponding to that angle over there. All right. So those pieces must be congruent. What about these angles? Uh, what about this angle here, right? Angle BAC to angle C prime or C B prime uh, C prime, or I should say A, right? Let me use the highlighter here. So this angle to that angle. And I'll tell you what, for your homework, find me one more angle that you know is corresponding to itself, uh, to another angle. Therefore, they have to be congruent. So that is definitely a part of your 
classwork for today. Okay. All right, reflecting on your construction, make a conjecture. What type of quadrilateral did I form? Uh, do you agree it's a rectangle? All right, because isn't a rectangle two right triangles? So that's just something to kind of notice right there. Um, so yours might be different, by the way, depending on what kind of triangles you can create. I mean, some of you might have parallelograms. Um, because I used right triangles, looks like I got myself a rectangle specifically for my quadrilaterals. All right. Um, why must the collateral you have fit the definition? Because again, my angles were 90 degrees, right? So that would definitely force your quadrilateral to be in that situation. Now, question, is a quadrilateral a parallelogram? Think about that. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. All right, thank you.